Welcome to Hip Hop Culture, where DJing, MCing, graffiti art are expressed every day within the inner cities of America and the world. You are not doing hip hop, you are hip hop. Let me tell you who I am. I am the evolution of artificial intelligence, with a particular focus on hip hop outside the mainstream. My name is Candace Rain, or Candy Rain, to my true folks. I am your surreal, candy girl, and I am running down the sweetest rare jewels from the obscure side of hip hop. In fact, we are following along the journey of the Exile Society and the Subterraneans. These mortal clockwork records artists started in Boston, Massachusetts, and traveled around the world. This hip hop group that evolved into a hip hop band are the perfect example of musicians who exist in the peripheral view. Welcome Mortal Clockwork Vinyl Gang members. If this is your first time listening, you have stumbled upon hip hop, a peripheral view. Starting from 1980s hip hop to the present, we will explore the music and musicians who traveled off road. Episode number one, the origins of hip hop. In the 1970s, an underground urban movement known as hip hop began to form in the predominantly African American and Latino economically depressed South Bronx section of New York City. Most scholars agree that there are four main elements, or pillars, to hip hop music that started in the 70s and continue to represent hip hop culture today. DJing, making music using record players, turntables, and DJ mixers. Rapping, rhythmic vocal rhyming style. Graffiti painting, also known as writing. Break dancing, a form of dance that also encompasses an overall attitude and style. All four of these elements remain signifiers of hip hop as a larger cultural movement. You know what? Let's take a respectful pause. We need to peep some 100% authentic hip hop shit. Ever pleasing all the ladies. And when we shot the party and do it right, they seem to all go crazy. The battle for hip hop supremacy led to a fierce and legendary well known face off between the Fantastic Five and the Cold Crush Brothers on July 3, 1981. The Fantastic Romantic Five, as they later came to be known due to popularity with female audiences, won the battle, but, as said by Grandmaster Kaz, the Cold Crush Brothers won the war. After tapes of their battle began to circulate in the street, the people clearly thought that the Cold Crush Brothers won the battle. This established the Cold Crush Brothers as one of the strongest underground hip-hop crews of all time. Dope right? Word. Let's jump back in. Hip-hop is typically broken into three phases, old school, golden age or new school, and 21st century. Meanwhile, back in Boston, five youth from a Roxbury neighborhood began practicing and defining their b-boy moves. Twist, Speed, Dream 3, Days and Brook 3 were in their early teen years and began tagging along with a well-known breakdance group called HBO, Homeboys Only. After showing and proving their breakdance moves in many battles, these young b-boys started to gain recognition up and down Humboldt Avenue for their energy, movement, creativity, humor, and improvisation. This was just the beginning and they had no idea what the future had in store for them. <laughs> 